The Buzz is one of the more interesting players in Smash history. Commonly known as the gatekeeper to top player stardom, it's difficult to refute his status as one of Ultimate's finest. What makes him so contentious, however, is not his ability to win, but how he goes about doing it. Many view the King of New York as one of the most defensive and lamest players in the world, with the strategy centered around camping and mind games. However, it isn't until we delve into his execution where we see true brilliance. So, what does he do to achieve this impenetrable neutral? How has he mastered the battle of mind games? And what if I told you that the King's biggest moments were won on aggression and offense? A lot of top players attribute their success to staying unpredictable. Light and Spargo are scary because you don't know what they're going to do. The Buzz, on the other hand, is a peculiar case, because you know exactly what he's going to do, but it's near impossible to stop. The first aspect that people rave and loathe about is his defense, and while I'd argue other aspects of his game deserve more attention, there's a reason the King of New York has rejected so many prospects from the top level. And to do this, the Buzz has perfected one of the most extreme spacing games of all time. Remember that bubble theory I mentioned a few analyses ago? The concept of keeping opponents out of your space at all costs? Well, the Buzz takes this to a completely new level. Only this time, his bubble is functionally half the stage. He loves to pressure at a distance, whether it's with Pikmin or Luma, and this allows him to rack up chip damage with virtually zero risk of getting hit himself. This attack cancel is amazing at covering space while also retreating, and this leads to Mr. E panic rolling out of the corner and ultimately forces an unsafe approach that gets called out by Luma. This wave dash keeps the buzz grounded, but also threatens Aluma anti-air, which freezes E, and this opens the door for Aluma up tilt and a mini frame trap. Here's some more attack cancels to zone up in pressure, but this time Louie Money does well at anticipating Luma's jabs and is rewarded with being in between Rosalina and Luma, and all it takes is more jabs and a poorly DI'd up smash. However, this full safe pressure game plan is truly showcased with his character picks, Rosalina, Olimar, and Min Min. Luma has proven to be an incredible tool for stage control and juggling. Normally, being in the corner is bad, but with Luma out controlling center stage, the buzz still maintains an advantage. The Little Star also tilts a lot of interactions in favor of the Buzz. This F tilt would have been safe against any other character, but a simple Luma rapid jab turns Toe Worm's hit against him. Olimar's Pikmin are disjointed, and throwing them forces a reaction while also racking up chip. The extra damage is forcing an approach out of quick, and notice how the Pikmin are also functioning as shields to Samus's projectiles. He forward airs whenever he suspects an approach, and quick can do nothing but shake his head. Min Min's arms are functionally unreflectable projectiles. These Ram Ram tilts are amazing anti-airs, and their various angles proves for an infuriatingly powerful neutral and ledge trapping game. This double jump fair was great awareness, and from here it's a simple react to whenever Leon decides to recover. Furthermore, the Buzz is very tactical in his interactions, meaning he'll never force the issue if he's at a disadvantage. More often than not, he'll opt to sit back the moment Luma dies to burn the respawn timer, and he immediately retreats to a corner to pluck more Pikmin. But these characters are far from perfect. None of them do particularly well against rushdowns, and have honest matchup spreads relative to the meta. Where they become broken is when we talk about Debuzz's hidden strength, which truly makes him an absolute nightmare to fight. Just went out in the three stock though, setting up to the ledge, look at that, the extended hitbox, very nice. Defining what is and isn't fun to play against is obviously subjective. There is no rhyme or reason to it, and as far as competition is concerned, it's still on the player to find the answer to whatever unfun strategy comes their way. That being said, defensive and campy playstyles have historically been on the receiving end of hate and rage. And rather than shying away from it, the buzz doubles down on his rage-inducing style, constantly keeping tabs on how his opponents are holding up. Mars is already mildly on edge, this was a noticeable sign mid-game, and of course there's the classic knee slapper. And despite the explosive pop-offs, DeBuzz maintains one of the calmest demeanors in the game. 
Even with the misplays and overextensions, he just never seems to lose focus. More often than not, we see a clear mismatch, not in mechanics or tech, but in mind games. But who really cares, right? DeBuzz is still a lame player who wins off camping, not interacting, and that's no fun to watch. I just covered what makes his defense so great. But what if we've had it all backwards? What if DeBuzz is more offensive than we've given him credit for? And what if all those lame defensive plays actually led to some of the most aggressive stocks that we've ever seen? Defense forms the building blocks to DeBuzz's play, but contrary to popular belief, his offense is what scores him games and entire sets. While the neutral is carefully executed, the king's advantage state is surprisingly complex, comprised of frame traps and fast decision making. He does well at getting back to stage here, notice this neutral B to block the blade beam, he anti as well, but then trades with Spargo's down air which launches both of them into the sky. The safe play is to fast fall aerial back to stage, but instead DeBuzz beautifully reacts to Spargo's air dodge to send him into orbit. Here Luma once again bails him out of disadvantage, and look at this crazy hurtbox shift to dodge the neutral air and counter with an up air juggle that just barely misses a Luma kill off the top. It isn't until later, where Delta Force gets put into the wash, and this gives the buzz the green light to edgeguard. Here he's seeking out these neutral air starters, this is textbook for Rose's combo game, and this forces out Krugbo's air dodge, and again we see a deep gimp offstage to finish the zero to death. Bringing it back to Westchester, this lunar landing aerial locks Miles and shield, which ultimately leads to another neutral air frame trap into a down air kill confirm. DeBuzz hasn't made a career off of camping and defense. Rather, he's done so by being slightly more selective of when to be aggressive. And in a game where everyone's recovery is good, who can really blame him? Sure, he's at his most comfortable position on defense, but just like all other top players, he's more than capable of recognizing an opportunity for a kill. However, the adoption of a slower, defensive game plan comes with the burden of staying the course when behind. And this is typically where we see DeBuzz struggle the most. Despite how hard he has to work to maintain that rock-solid defense, he has to work even harder when he's trailing. Not only does this force him to approach, but it often lowers the shields and creates more openings for his opponents. This wait was good to relieve some corner pressure, but then he immediately blows it by trying to get in too quickly, first with this greedy roll in, and then with an even greedier dash attack, and this gets punished and puts him back to where he started. This was an unfortunate whiff of the forward air, but Leo ends up going too deep off stage, which should give DeBuzz free reign to set up a ledge trap, but because he's without Luma and already being down a stock, he goes for a down air spike which misses, and this is what happens when you try to fight Arsene. Ultimately, this paints an image of DeBuzz as one of the best frontrunners in the game, a player that will strangle his opponents the moment he gets out ahead, but struggles to consistently make meaningful comebacks. And while the strategy has caused some trepidation in longer bracket runs, DeBuzz has proven multiple times how effective it can be given time and the opportunity. For all the frustration he causes, I, like many of you, find DeBuzz one of the more entertaining players to watch, a player that boasts one of the best neutrals while also excelling at picking his spots to go in. All the while, he is constantly learning new tech and confirms with his cast of characters that, from my predictions, will form into the best defensive core among active players. And because he's been consistent for so long, I honestly did not have a hard time assessing his current ranking. I don't see him falling below the top 25, but he has historically struggled against the top 10. So, I would rate DeBuzz as a top 15 player in the world, with one of the best defenses in Smash history. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful. If you did, let me know by leaving a like and subscribing for more Smash Ultimate content. Huge shout out to Beyond the Summit, VG Bootcamp, and many other Smash Ultimate gameplay channels for providing the VODs. If you're interested in Smash played at the highest level, go check them out. Their channels are linked in this video's description. If there's a character or player you would like me to do an analysis on, let me know in a comment below. That's all I have for now, and I will see you all later.